channel I hope you're all well today's video is super super exciting because I'm gonna be doing a huge book haul so over the last couple of months I have accumulated quite the collection of books and I just saw that I'd show you guys the books that I recently purchased most of these are from Waterstones but a couple of them are from the works so I just thought I'd show you guys the books that I've bought recently as you can see from behind I've got quite the stack of books but I'm very very excited to read these all most of these I have got them on my autumn TBR which will be my next video after this one so if you guys want to know what I'm going to be reading over autumn then definitely check out the video after this after you've watched this one because you know why would you want to skip I hope you guys enjoyed this video if you do don't forget to give the video a thumbs up subscribe down below and don't forget to turn on the little post notification bell so you're notified every time I upload a new video and don't forget to follow me on all of my social media channels so you can follow me whilst I'm reading all of these books and with that said let's just jump straight into this video it's one of those days where you need a really really cold icy drink we are currently in a heat wave in the UK although today is supposed to be the last day of like the really hot weather it's supposed to be up to 27 today and after that it's supposed to go back down which I'm so excited about because I'm not one to usually wish away summer but we've had such an awful summer that I just feel like now is definitely not the right time to have one and I'm ready for the autumn weather. I just needed this crisp cold drink to get me through some videos because I've got a lot of content to film for the next month so wish me luck. The first two books that I'm going to show you I actually already own them in different covers but I bought them with the new covers because I just love them so much and that is Magnolia Park's Daisy Hates by Jessa Hastings which you guys would have seen in my wrap up video when was it my July and August wrap up video I read Magnolia Parks and I have the original covers in these as well but I just wanted to get my hands on these ones too because they're just so pretty and I think they are so fitting with the whole like theme and I just love them and I actually picked these up in the works for £5 each which I thought was such an incredible deal as normally they're £8.99 so you know quite a bit of money off and I just yeah I just love the covers I've actually just finished reading Daisy Hates so I as I said I've read these two not these actual books because I have the other ones I equally really really love them and also um i just think they're so pretty when they sort of stand up next to the other ones especially the spines as well i just think they're really really cool next up i took a trip to waterstones and i picked up some incredible finds that have actually been on my tbr for quite a while and i decided to pick this one up specifically because it just screams autumn and that is belladonna by adeline grace which the lovely sales assistant in there was reading it and i asked her what she was reading because she had the hardcover copy and it was so beautiful i was like oh my god what are you reading and she said to me that she was reading this and she said that it feels so autumnal and it feels like it's something that tim burton should direct so i was like sold instantly i'm very very excited about this i don't really know what it's about to be honest but I really quite like that sometimes about a book if I don't know too much about it and I just sort of dive into it without kind of you know knowing anything about it but I just love the cover of this book I just think it's so beautiful so thank you to the lovely sales assistant in Waterstones because she helped me pick up a book that I probably did not need but I have seen quite a few people talk about it so I was super interested in picking it up I don't think I would have picked it up if I hadn't been suggested it so very very excited to see what this one is about and also just a quick um disclaimer most of these books you will either see in my um monthly reading vlogs that i upload or on my bookstagram which as i said i will link in the description box down below so you guys can follow me over there and check out the books that i read because i typically update my instagram quite often with my current reads and stuff and then i also upload reviews on there i'm super super excited to see what this one's about and i also like it because it's a floppy paperback does anybody else have this thing where they have to read 
a floppy paperback. But if a book is a floppy paperback, I am sold instantly. I don't care what the story is about, I'll just buy it for the sake of... Because it's a floppy paperback, basically. Next up, I picked up The Southern Book Club's Guide to Slaying Vampires by Grady Hendrix. Now, this one I'm super excited to read, purely because the plot sounds so interesting. So, it's set in the 90s, and it's kind of like a... Um, like fantasy mixed in with a thriller mystery sort of vibe and i was sold purely because it said um that the one of the the kind of there's a sentence that says is he a brad pitt a bundy or something worse and i was like hooked really um i also really liked it because it's a big paperback i also this is another one of my things i love when a book is really really big compared to like your average sized paperback. When we were in France, um, we went to bookshops and the standard size for a paperback over there is like a big one. And I was just like, oh my God, I love it. I'm in love. Yeah, I'm super excited to read this. I love the cover. Once again, the sales assistants in Waterstones were like, I love the cover of this book and I'd purely pick it up for the cover. I think a lot of the time, um, Books are also, like, I pick up books purely because of the kind of aesthetics of them. Um, but yeah, I'm super excited to read this. This is definitely going to be on my autumn TBR because this just sounds like the perfect book to cosy up with when it's, like, raining and it's just, like, windy and stuff outside and, like, you can curl up with a blanket and a candle and a hot drink and just sit and read this. This is like the perfect vibe for that. So super excited to read this one. So next up is a series. Now this was partially my fault that I picked up one of the other books sort of in this series. So I, ages ago, probably this time last year, picked up Foul Lady Fortune by Chloe Gong. Is it Chloe Gong? Yeah. Um, and I was super excited to read it because it's a, set in Shanghai and it's like a mystery kind of, once again like a mystery um, sort of fantasy kind of mixed in together and I was, I was like this is right up my street and it's set in the 30s I think and I knew previously that this author had released two other books beforehand, however I didn't know they were sort of intertwined with each other and although people say that you don't have to read these two books in order to follow on from the story in Foul Lady Fortune, it's better that they do because apparently there's like crossovers that happen and that is um, These Violent Delights and Our Violet Ends and I'm super excited to read these. Um, so these are also set in Shanghai in the 20s and I'm just really excited to read them. I saw Rachel Catherine read Foul Lady Fortune and she said that she really really enjoyed it but that she was so happy that she read these two before she read Foul Lady Fortune and although Chloe Gong herself apparently says that you can read them without having read these two books first she does recommend to read them first and then go on to the Foul Lady Fortune duology because I think there's Foul Lady Fortune and there's um violent call or something along those i can't quite remember the name of it i know it's got a blue cover but i think that's only like a novella or it seems very very short so um i don't think it's like a full story behind that i could be completely wrong please correct me if i am i'm really excited to read these because i think also these are kind of like a like a romeo and juliet retelling and this literally sounds so exciting. So yeah, I'm really, really excited to read these, see how I get on with them, and I will let you know because I have heard some really, really great things about this series. I actually really, really like the covers of them too. I think they're really cool. Next up, I picked up Days at the Morisaki Bookshop, and I'm not even gonna try and pronounce the author's name. I will just show you because I do not want to um, mispronounce it. But this just seemed like a really sweet little book and I saw someone on Bookstagram read this and they said that it was actually one of the most, um, one of the best stories they'd read in regards to actually working in a bookshop. So, like, the most realistic, that's the word. 
And I was just really excited to read this, and I'd seen this previously when I first went to Waterstones, I didn't pick it up, and then I returned a couple of days ago and I picked it up then, because they had it on the buy one get one half price deal. And I also really love the cover of it, I think it's so sweet with the little cat, got the bike and the little umbrella, and just like all the little details in this, I think it's really sweet. I feel like it's one of those books that if you want to read in one sitting, you can just pick this up and like go for it. Um, and I'm trying to sort of collect little books like that, because I've got I've got a couple on my bookshelf actually. Um, I've got Winter in Sokcho and I've also got Uncle Paul which are quite like fast paced books that you can sort of read in one sitting and I just wanted to pick this up. Seemed really really good. Um, as I said I'm not 100% sure what this is about but it says a tale of families love new beginnings and the comfort that can be found in books from the beginning of summer to early spring i lived at the morisaki bookshop i spent that period of my life in the spare room on the second floor of the store trying to bury myself in books the cramped room barely got any light and everything felt damp it smelled constantly of musty old books but i will always remember the days i spent there because that's where my real life began and i know without a doubt that if not for those days the rest of my life would have been bland Monot and lonely. The Morisaki bookshop is precious to me. It's a place I know I'll never forget, which I just think will sound like a really sweet read. And this is set in Tokyo, which sounds really, really fun. Tokyo's on my travel bucket list, so I really like reading about it. And yeah, so really looking forward to reading this one. Next up, in the works. These are a bit out of order from when I bought them, but I picked up this book in the works. This was in the three for six pound deal. And actually, courtesy of Owen, because he picked this one up for me, he quite literally just picked it up. He was like, can I choose you a book? And I said yes, and he looked at this book and he said, I liked the cover. And because it said, signed, sealed, dead, and he was like, it sounds like a murder mystery and I know you like murder mystery. So I was like, fair enough, at least you know my favourite genre. <laughs> But this does actually sound really, really interesting. Um, it says fans of Agatha Christie and Midsummer Murders will be hooked from the very first page. So this could actually also be a book for my mum because my mum loves Midsummer Murders, or she used to anyway. Sorry mum if you don't, I feel like you used to watch it. But yeah, I'm really excited and it's I think it's about some school teachers and yeah, it just sounds really good. I don't really know anything more about it, but the actual title of the book is called A Pen Dipped in Poison by J.M. Hall and it just sounded really fun. So I thought another one of those kind of quick reads in the autumn when it's raining outside you can just curl up on the sofa and read this. So this just sounded right up my street. Now this next book I'm so excited about and I think I'm actually going to film a whole video on it purely because of how excited I am for it. I've seen this all over TikTok and Bookstagram and people have said you have to try and solve the murder before finishing the book and this is... Murder in the Family by Cara Hunter. It says, one body, six experts, can you solve the case before they do? And it's basically filled with all of the kind of case study files, newspaper articles, everything you need to know. And I wanna see if I can do it. I have read a huge amount of murder mysteries. I've watched a lot of murder mysteries as well. And I feel like I can do this. So the blurb says, in December 2003, I was one year old, guys, because I was born in 2002. Luke Ryder was found dead in the garden of a family home in London, leaving behind a wealthy old widow and three stepchildren. Nobody saw anything. Now, secrets will be revealed live on camera. Years later, a group of experts re-examine the evidence on Infamous, a true crime show, with shocking results. Does the team know more than they've been letting on, or does the truth lie closer to home? Can you solve the case before they do? The truth will blow your mind. Which I'm very excited about because I kind of I love these sorts of murder mysteries that you can kind of interact with there's another one I think that I actually have oh that's right The Appeal by Janice Hallett I kind of got that same vibe where it's a lot of like postcards and letters and newspaper articles and stuff which I love I love that sort of thing so um, I'm super excited to read this and as I said I've seen this all over social media and I just wanted to get it and I as I walked into water stones the other day and it was on the um buy one get one half price table i was like i'm grabbing that because it just sounded great so i'm very very excited to see where this leads me also I, as i said i think i might do a video on this if that's something you guys would like to see me reading this then please let me know in the comments down below because i 
will probably film it anyway but if you guys, if that's definitely something you'd like to see then let me know. Next up, another book that I got in the three for six pound deal at the works I picked up the launch party by Lauren Forry and this literally sounded so incredible especially for kind of autumn like Halloween vibes this basically is one hotel 10 guests how many will survive but this is all based around the moon apparently so it says 10 lucky people have won a place at the most exclusive launch event of the century the grand opening of hotel artemis the first hotel on the moon it's an invitation to die for as their transport departs for its return to earth and the doors seal shut behind them the guests take the next leap for mankind however they soon discover that all is not as it seems the champagne may be flowing but there is no one to pour it room service is available but there is no one to deliver it besides the 10 of them they are completely alone when one of the guests is found murdered fear spreads through the group but that death is only the beginning being three days journey from home with no way to contact the outside can any of the guests survive their stay this sounds exactly a bit like five survive by holly jackson i'm currently reading it and no word of light i started it yesterday and i'm finishing it today that is how good i literally have it right here um and it's kind of that whole like you're all alone out there which just sounds so fun as you can tell i'm a I mean, it's no surprise to anyone now that murder mystery is literally one of my favourite genres. But I'm trying to find murder mysteries that are so different to others that I've read before. Because I find that a lot of them kind of repeat themselves. Or I've kind of read kind of the same plot twists. So it then doesn't really kind of... I don't really get like a reaction out of it. I find that it's just a bit mundane. So to find something really interesting like this, sat on the moon, I thought that was really different. As I said, it was in the three for six pound deal in the works. So I just felt like it was you know a good thing and I also really like the cover it's one of those like shiny covers which is really cool so the last one that I picked up in the works for the three for is it the last one yeah um for the three for six pound deal is one more uh once more with feeling by Alyssa Sussman who wrote funny you should ask now I have not I don't own funny you should ask and I haven't read funny you should ask and this is what I was going to ask and I'm going to put a poll up on my Instagram to see whether or not I have to read Funny You Should Ask first and then read this or if I can read this and then Funny You Should Ask. I don't know if they're connected or not but I wasn't at first I wasn't actually going to even pick these up to be honest. Um, I'd seen Funny You Should Ask and I'd heard quite a lot of good things about it. I know that it is a romance um, and I know a lot of people loved Funny You Should Ask but then a lot of people said they didn't enjoy this one as much. Not 100% sure but I think what this is is that there's like a then and now kind of POV which I really enjoy in books and there's a there's Katie and Cal and I think they originally knew each other and then they kind of meet up in the future um I think is Katie like a oh she's a pop star and then Cal kind of is in Broadway and I think they meet up because they're on the same show or something something along those lines I think um and then they kind of uncover secrets or like a relationship that they had prior to that or whatever it may be but it sounded really interesting and I do quite like a sort of a good romance like that so I'm super excited to read this and as I said please let me know if I should read Funny You Should Ask first I don't know if they're intertwined anyhow or if I can just get on with this one but yeah I'm really excited to read this I also love the cover of it I think it's really really cool and the spine's really fun too which I just I love I love a I love a good looking book does anybody else find that because I probably sound like a real right weirdo at the moment okay so the next couple of books that I picked up are gonna sound so weird as to why I picked them up but hear me out if i haven't already said before a good girl's guide to murder is one of my favorite books and holly jackson is one of my favorite authors and i'm reading five survivor at the moment however i read the a good girl's guide to murder way before it like was super super popular i think i read it back in 2020 i think yeah, I think I read it back in 2020. I loved it, and as I said, it's one of my favourite books. However, 
because the TV show is coming out, if you guys didn't know, there's a TV show coming out based on it, and I want to reread the series because I've not reread it since then. Although I read the last book last year, but I want to read like the whole series again. However, I want to annotate it. So I currently own two copies of The Good Girl's Guide to Murder. The original copy that I bought ages ago and read and I bought a French version literally this summer which you would have seen on my Instagram so I decided to pick up another copy so that I can annotate my first ever copy that I bought and keep a nice copy and I've also got the limited edition version from Waterstones coming in October which I'm so excited about which I could put up on my bookshelf so I'm super super excited for that one but I just thought I'd pick up another copy purely because I wanted, as I said, to reread it, but I want to annotate it because I, as much as I love this series, I want to reread it just so that I can remember it. I remember the story and kind of what happened and the who done it, but I can't quite remember like all the little details, so I really want to read it again. As I said, the ser the TV series is coming out, so I wanted to kind of pick it up again. And I also found these in Asda. They do a deal two for nine pounds on a lot of the books. And this one I got with another book that I'll show you in a minute. But yeah, if you guys haven't read this, I would highly recommend. It's a YA murder mystery. And it's about a, we follow a girl called Pippa. And she basically uncovers a case that happened five years ago. It's really great. And it's so much fun. And I just, I love it. Within that, two for nine pound deal in Asda. I also picked up my beloved Harry Potter and the Philosopher's Stone. So I picked up these covers uh, maybe about a year ago actually with all of them. However, I already owned the Philosopher's Stone but it was so creased and like bent and the spines were all horrible and damn it and it's literally rancid pages are like yellow and everything so i was like i'm gonna pick up a clean new copy so i can read it this winter or this autumn winter because i just i i always have to do a reread of all the harry potters over the autumn because it just makes me feel so like it just i love it it just makes me feel kind of nostalgic but i love these covers i think they are probably my favorite covers that they've done because i just yeah i just love them but on to our last two books guys two books to go so these two are basically i've been wanting to read more kind of non-fiction books as well and i have a lot of historical fiction books that i really really enjoy reading i like reading classics and my favorite classics author is george orwell i grew up reading george orwell and i just loved it like my first ever novel that I read from him was Animal Farm when I was in year nine and I, just ever since then it's just left like this kind of permanent kind of mark on me and I just thought it was such incredible writing so clever and it's a political satire basically and most of his books are and it makes understanding things so much easier from a fictional point of view and I just love his writing and personally as a person I just really really like like to learn about him so I decided to pick up one of his memoirs from Waterstones and that is Down and Out in Paris and London and this was basically written at the time when he was a struggling writer in his 20s it documents his first contact with poverty it talks about how he slept in bug infested hostels and he was a dishwasher in Paris and how he was living alongside tramps and a Russian ex-army captain. I think from going from something like that so being you know in this poverty kind of point of view to being an incredibly successful writer I just think there's something so interesting about that as you guys know i'm from france and i was born v like very very close to paris like on the outskirts of paris so for me paris holds a very special place in my heart i love paris it's literally one of my favorite cities i just really wanted to kind of see his point of view about it and you know the sort of 
troubles and tribulations that he sort of had to go through to get to where he was and I just think that's something so cool and it's as I said it's a memoir and as I said George Orwell is one of my favourite authors so um, I'm super super excited to read this and it's quite a short book as well so I felt like it was quite a good you know a nice sort of memoir to read but he's got multiple memoirs of his times in life and he's got one when he was in the Spanish Civil War and he's got a few others in quite significant times of his life which I think is quite cool so I'd eventually kind of like to collect all of them. So I'm very excited to read this one. I picked up This Is Going To Hurt by Adam Kay who actually this was recently adapted in a bbc program and i kept watching snippets of it on tiktok that would like come up on my for you page but i was super super interested in this because so many people have said there's like a, like the emotion that he writes in these because they're basically diary entries of his time as a junior doctor in the nhs and he kind of makes it like funny and sad and you know he points out the kind of the difficulties that they go through during the NHS this was obviously prior to sort of the pandemic as well so to kind of remember what it I find it so difficult to kind of remember what it was like before the like pandemic but then it feels like now the pandemic never happened so to kind of read about it and as I said as a junior doctor as well these are all of his diary entries and I just think um it's quite interesting to read and I just thought it was time that I picked this up because I have seen it. Also, I did get inspired. So in Magnolia Parks, if anybody has read it, BJ Ballantyne reads a lot of books and I got inspired to read this one because he mentions this book. So I was like, okay, if BJ Ballantyne reads it, I'll read it and we'll go from there. <laughs> so yeah, I was very excited to pick this up. And as I said, I'm trying to read sort of more like... It's more like biographies and kind of just books that are generally interesting just to kind of broaden my knowledge bank a little bit because I feel like as much as I love reading fiction, obviously fiction is fiction, it's made up, so there's nothing necessarily there that's going to kind of um, teach you things and kind of broaden your just broaden your knowledge on a lot of things that you necessarily wouldn't kind of know about things like the NHS like I haven't got a clue like yes when I go to the doctors and stuff like I'm a patient but as in I don't know the ins and outs of working in a busy hospital and just things like that like I think you know learning about those things is quite interesting that is my little book haul that I have for you guys. Um, I definitely went a little bit crazy over the last couple of weeks with buying books. I'm now officially, I keep saying to myself I'm on a book buying ban but I don't think that's going to happen anytime soon. But yeah I'm excited to see what books I get read over the next couple of months. So that was my book haul. I hope you guys enjoyed this video and if you did don't forget to leave the video a thumbs up. Subscribe down below and don't forget to turn on the little post notification bell so you're notified every time I upload a new video and yeah I just hope that you guys have got a little bit of inspiration out of these books to add to your TBR if you ever go book shopping I always find inspiration from people's book hauls I always add them to my list and I tick them off when I buy them I quite like that I find it quite satisfying I'm just a weird human really um but yeah so I hope you guys enjoyed this video and I will see you guys in next week's video bye guys Thank you.